Yeah, that's what I've been trying to do is pick movies that I've seen more recently because uh, we've had a couple episodes that were not very good. Like Chicago. I kind of almost want to just delete that episode altogether. Because I, <laughs> I went and looked it up a little bit afterwards. and uh, Yeah. You were wrong about everything? Pretty much. Like, the the whole thing is about her trying to get off it's like a, a long it's like a court procedural but in, in a musical form of her trying to get off for murder and it's actually a pretty good movie like all right i got one picked out all right whenever you're ready <laughs> did i bore you to death with that conversation <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh please stop stop all right no. what movie you got i was just saying you don't have to stall the movie <laughs> well, I, I was selected just, I was for just today talking. <laughs> I don't need I, the filibuster anymore. <laughs> I thought I was just talking to a friend, apparently. <laughs> Taylor and Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Taylor and Alan, I see that. The movie I have selected is Pineapple Express. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. I love this movie. It is fantastic, and it is fantastic. Yeah, this is this, um, this one's really good. I've only seen it once. I might have seen it twice, but really, I, I haven't I've seen, it, very seen often. it like ten times. Yeah, there. It's one of those movies that just has like lots of different, you know, quotables and memorable cameos and moments it's got a lot of famous people in it um it's it's just really funny uh basically the premise is seth rogan is a uh, process server who likes to get high a lot because he's seth rogan can you do the seth rogan laugh uh hmm, let me think about it I don't know. How, how does it sound? I, I can kind of picture it, but it's like a <laughs> like I can't <laughs> I, I can't I can't yeah. quite hear it. Yeah, I can't get it. I can't nail it down in my head either. There's that scene in um, This Is the End where he gets off the plane and TMZ is like, "Hey, do your laugh, do your laugh." He's like, "What are you talking about?" He's like, "Do your laugh," and he does it. It's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he definitely has a uh, distinct, memorable laugh. Distinct, yeah, distinct laugh. But anyways, uh, anyways, he is a process server. He witnesses a murder, and is a he gets super paranoid that they are going to find out who he is and trace him back to his drug dealer. Who and the, my favorite thing about this movie is that. Be, he, he is really paranoid and he, he comes up with these like wacky things that he thinks are going to happen and then turns out like they are happening and he's like right to be paranoid um, the one that <laughs> the one that stands out to me is when he's out in the woods with James Franco and he's like gotta smash my phone and he's like because they're going to triangulate my you know my area this and that and then he smashes it on a rock and it sounds crazy when he's talking about it, but then you find out that they were trying to track him and they were trying to triangulate him until he broke his phone and a bunch of different wacky situations. <laughs> what is it, um, uh, the guy from – oh, man. The, Danny McBride. Yeah. The, why? How do you know that and why am I so bad? <laughs> Uh, because he's the third funniest guy in this movie. <laughs> what is his line when he uh, he cocks the shotgun? Thug life. <laughs> Thug life. Thank you, man. I ah, oh, this is my brain is not doing well. Uh, uh, yeah, Danny McBride is really funny in this movie. Um, just because he's he's really over the top, um, but he just uh, it's hard to explain the kind of character he is. Uh, if you've ever seen Eastbound and Down, he's that guy, which I feel like most of the characters Dan McBride plays is just 
a slightly altered version of himself in real life. Yeah, he just plays Danny McBride on TV. He is Danny McBride, yeah. Um, between this and, like, a Hot Rod, he he's really funny. Are the foot fists wet? You, That's another That was pretty one. funny, too. Yeah. Or uh, Tropic Thunder. Oh, yeah, that's right. He is in Tropic Thunder. Um, what's the other bigger one that I'm thinking of? I can't think of it. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite scenes is uh, there's a big fight between him and James Franco and Seth Rogen because they go to his house and pretty much are trying to make sure he doesn't say who they are and that that's where they're getting their drugs from and I don't even remember exactly what but his cat had died and he had made a cake for it and someone makes fun of his cat and there ends up being this big massive fight that tears apart like his whole house and it's it's just a really funny scene uh, and then they end up taping him to a chair and then that comes my favorite line because he's like they got him taped they got him duct taped to this chair and they have like duct tape stretching across his forehead and he's just like, oh, I'm going to flex my muscles and bust out here real quick. <laughs> oh, man. I, I'm surprised at how little I remember this movie. Like, I, as you're saying it, it's like, oh, yeah, I remember that part. I remember that part. But, like, when yeah. you brought it up originally, I was like, what happens in this movie? I just – they hit a guy with their car. They set a factory, a warehouse of pot on fire. Uh, Danny McBride oh, gets yeah. shot. But that's like all I can like. Danny McBride almost dies <clears throat> so many times, and by the end of the movie, he's like completely destroyed. But somehow he's still alive. Uh, he's really funny. Him and Seth Rogen and James Franco all become best friends at the end of the movie. Uh, it's just got a lot of different. See, I, I, it's hard to explain without just talking about the entire movie. But it's just really funny. But it. The the one scene that actually really stands out to me, I always thought was funny because uh, it reminds me of something that my dad used to do. So James Franco and Seth Rogen spend the night out in the woods in his car, and they leave it running. Of course, so by the time they wake up in the morning, the whole battery's dead. So Seth Rogen goes to start the car, and it won't start. And he says, he's like, oh, no. He's like, the car won't start. And James Franco... He says, what do you mean the car won't start? He's like, it, it means the car won't start. I, I don't know how else to say it other than the, the car won't start. The car's dead. It won't start. And it's something that my dad used to do. I, <laughs> someone would show up at our house or something would happen. I'd be like, hey, dad, someone's at the door. But what do you mean someone's at the door? It means someone's at the door. I don't. What else do you need me to say? Someone is at the door. Like, hey, Dad, Mom's on the phone. What do you mean your mom's on the phone? It means she's on the phone. I, do you need more than that? There's someone at the door. You know what's funny about that is that you do that to me all the time on this podcast. Explain. <clears throat> That's exactly what I mean. I'll say something. What do you mean <laughs> I do that all the time on this podcast? You'll say something, and my only answer is like, "That's exactly what I meant to say." Like, that's open for interpretation. Is it? Is it really though? Um, James mean? Franco is really good in this and most things. He like I haven't seen the, oh absolutely the Disaster Artist yet. Um, but yeah, like, that movie fantastic. I feel like he like snuck up on being a really good actor. Do you know what I mean? Like. He did. Yeah. He's got all these because movies. he does all these goofy roles, yeah. so you don't take him too seriously. Um, like he's yeah, just he's uh, a great actor going. in a lot of not bad movies, but not movies people would ever take serious. And then, like all of a sudden, he's got all these roles and different characters that he's been and done different things and done really, really well. To where it's like, oh no, he's he's a really good actor. Yeah, he yeah he's hilarious. And uh, to talk about the disaster artist for a moment, that movie. So we went and saw this uh, last Friday when it came out, and he he completely takes over this character. 
and watching the movie, there was a few different times where I, w- I would I would tell Crystal like, I know that this is James Franco, but like you cannot see James Franco. Like, it's not even James Franco in this movie. He is like the real Tommy Wiseau. It's insane. Yeah, everything about it is like. Not that I know Tommy personally. I mean, you know, we've met a few times, but <laughs> everything that I've learned about him over the last, you know, six months or whatever is like dead on. And just the way he talks and his laugh, he got his laugh is down like perfect. And even though you're looking right at him, it's not like he's like gone through a bunch of makeup and all this stuff. Like he still kind of looks like Franco. He he completely transforms into a different person. It, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, because um, did you ever watch yeah. Freaks and Geeks? Yeah, I was going to talk about that one too. Did you watch that one? <laughs> yes. We. Uh, that was a great show. We actually watched it. I think this year. Finally, okay. For the first time. And uh, uh, yeah, so Judd Apatow directed it. Yeah. You got James Franco, Seth Rogen, um, Jason. What's his name? Jason. The guy from How I Met Your Mother. Siegel? Is he in that one? Yeah, Jason yeah, Siegel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, Sam uh, Levine. Linda. Yeah, Linda Cardellini. Linda Cardellini, but she's not really in much anymore, is she? Um, no, not. Well, I mean, she still does. She's in Daddy's Home. Hmm. In Daddy's Home, too. <laughs> Um, she was in the Scooby Doo movies, but she's like one of the main characters in that show. Yeah, um, it's got uh, Martin Starr. Martin uh, Starr, like really young. Martin yeah. Martin Starr. Well, all, everyone um, was really young. They're all high schoolers. Yeah, it, and they they really look like high schoolers. I don't know how old they were when it came out, but it's oh, and uh, what's her name? Busy Phillips. Mm. She doesn't really do that much these days, but she's in it. Yeah, I feel like there's one other person that I'm missing. Um, one other notable person. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. I don't know. Well, there was a guy. He was only in it for one episode, but he played the guy with special needs, um, who was a great actor. But I, I can't think of his name. You'll have to remind me because it's it's been a few years since we saw this. Ben Foster. Ben Foster. Oh, Ben off. Foster. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but no, this show is is surprisingly great for it only lasting one season. And I know, like, that's yeah, a big, that's, big uh, thing people complain about. But like, it like just no one watched it at the time, but it was so good. Um, <clears throat> But I think it would have gotten ruined. I don't think – I think if it, it would have gone on to a second season because the second season was going to be about her getting addicted to heroin, I think. Seriously? Yeah, because she, she runs off and follows the Grateful Dead. I think, right. Was it the Grateful oh, Dead? yeah. Or the Rolling Stones? I think it was the Grateful Dead. I think it was Dead. the Grateful Dead. And, uh, yeah, I, I read somewhere that they are talking about – I will get by – that's all I got. <laughs> that, that they're going to have her get addicted to heroin. That takes a turn. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. But uh Yeah, it's it's a classic case of you either die the hero or live long <laughs> enough to see yourself become the villain. <laughs> but uh no. And, you know, it, speaking of that, just going off on to another tangent. Uh I was I was on some, I was reading some Something on Reddit the other day talking about stuff that ended too soon, you know, along those lines. And then CSIDK. one person – yes, yeah, CSIDK. <laughs> Actually, that one went longer than it should have. <laughs> uh, Into the Badlands probably ended too soon. Um, someone brought up Chris Farley, right? Mm. And Chris Farley, obviously, he's known as – he was hilarious, this and that, SNL, and his movies with David Spade, and then he died when he was – late 20s or however old he was. Yeah, I don't know. But, th- but there was one guy who made the comment like, yeah, he, it's 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 nice that we can remember him because he never really got to do any bad roles, but had he lived, he probably would have. Yeah. 
And well, in in a world where Chris Farley didn't overdose, he probably would have been Paul Blart. Yes, and and I I, would I read say, that and I was like, that is depressing. <laughs> I would say like that he ahead. was like all respect to Chris Farley, but I think he was already getting to that point. His all you think so yeah, because he did. Let's see, there's Black Sheep. There was Tommy Boy. Tommy, Bo- they're, they're the same character. It was the same movie. Done twice. Oh, it's the same, pretty much. Yeah, you know what I mean. And it, like, I can't think of anything else that he's in beyond those two. But I, I, you know, it was just, it's kind of like Billy Madison. Billy, yeah, Billy Madison. It was kind of the he, same note. He would be just in that handful of guys who has their cameo in like every Adam Sandler movie. Do you think he would have been uh, in uh, that? What's that High School Reunion one? Grown Ups. Chris oh, Farley in, in Grown Ups would have been. Yeah, that would have just been sad. Um, yeah, he definitely would. I definitely feel like he would have... Like, he wouldn't be a leading role guy, but he would be someone who is on all these happy Madison production yeah. movies, you know? And I'm not... Pretty much, he would be Kevin James. I'm not saying that he... That it's good that he died because his career <laughs> is... No, of course ...more not. respected or anything like that. Like, that's not my point. But, like, it's just... He was already for at least for me, from my memory of him, I think he was already kind of in that point of where people were exhausted by his character in movies and TV shows. Yeah, I mean, because he kind of, but I don't know. He played the same character in everything. He's one maybe, of those guys. Maybe not because Adam Sandler's career lasted, and he did the same thing for a long time. Like he wasn't the same character as Chris Farley, but he did the same character. He was the same, did. yeah. And he had a longer career, so maybe maybe I'm wrong, but at, it, this, at this point, if Chris Farley is still alive, definitely would have run its course his career. I he's think. one of those guys who he's like, uh, this dude's trying too hard. He's just does not. He's not funny anymore. Yeah, it was funny when I was a kid. Now it's not as funny. I don't know who who knows, but yeah, when I read that about him, he would have been Paul Blart, and I was like, that is upsetting. <laughs> That he would have been reduced to that. Well, so if Pineapple Express comes on TV, what are you going to do? Oh, I'll watch it every time. Yeah. I need to watch this again. Absolutely. I want to see it again. That movie is hilarious. I love it. So if you're going to fix Pineapple Express, what would you do? Uh, Yeah, I don't know if I would change anything about this movie. Um, No, I think it's pretty great all the way through. I don't think it's missing anything. Um... I, uh, it's just no. I wouldn't change anything about it. I think what they should have done is at the end reveal. You got a couple of reveals coming. Are you ready? It's gonna blow your mind. Okay. All right. This is a twenty years in the future look at Freaks and Geeks. Right. Danny McBride is the main character from Freaks and Geeks. Okay. <laughs> and instead of marijuana, it's all about heroin or meth. Meth would have been better. Make so you're uh, so Pineapple Express is season two of Freaks and Geeks. Yes. Yeah, I like it. And uh, it's all about meth instead of marijuana. Yeah, um, I dig it. I'm into it. But uh, yeah, that's what I would do different. I think they would have if they that that should have happened. That would have been because it was this Judd Apatow. Did Judd Apatow do Pineapple Express or is this? Um, I don't think it was. I don't think so either. Let's have a look. This was no David Gordon Green. I don't know who he is. Yeah, I don't either. Some rando. <laughs> Whatever month this is, is the correct month, and we are, as always, holding our competition for who can get the most $1 votes on our Patreon. If you want to vote for us, you can find it somehow, do some research. I don't know the website, because patreon.com, and then type in the podcast name, and you can vote for either Alan or I, which is Taylor, and Loser will have to do a horrible punishment of which will be de- decided at a future date. That's all I got. 
Oh, there's other stuff that you can do. If you want to donate more than a dollar, uh, you can access episodes early. And you can also make us watch very, 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 very bad movies. Uh, if that's what you are into. And then we'll have to talk about those on our podcast as well. And you can follow us on Twitter at I Seen That Pod. Yeah, you can do that too. And you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash I Seen That. That is the truth. <laughs>